Good day, everybody. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar, and what I'd like to talk about today is I'd like to talk about uh, two different uh, effects that involve uh, hemoglobin, and these include the Bohr and Haldane effects. And as you as you may well know, I've just fairly recently com uh, completed a video uh, covering a Bohr, in, a Bohr effect in some detail, and I'm getting some questions about the Haldane effect. And uh, it is somewhat related to the Bohr effect, and there is actually it can be some confusion confusion that occurs when comparing the Bohr and Haldane effects. And I thought about maybe just doing a video to focus um, on the uh, Haldane effect, but I, I think it actually might be better if we just talk about both Bohr and Haldane uh, the the effects. Um, and, and in the same video and kind of con compare and contrast really what these, these effects are describing what they're looking at. So when we talk about um, the Bohr effect, let's go ahead and do the Bohr effect first simply because we've already completed a video on that. We should be somewhat familiar. So when I talk about the Bohr effect, the Bohr effect, what are we talking about? Okay. So if you remember, Bohr effect has to do with hemoglobin's affinity, so hemoglobin, and its affinity for oxygen, for O2. So it, it specifically has to do with how uh, hemoglobin wants to bind to oxygen. What is its, its affinity? And we know that you basically run into two situations with the Bohr effect. You run into a situation where you have a low pH environment. So the pH of that environment is low, okay, which of course is increased um, acid content, um, increased um, uh, protons, hydronium ions, hydrogen ions, whatever you want to call them. And in that situation, um, that causes a conformational change on hemoglobin and um, it, it produces what we know as a right shift, okay, a right shift of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, which then um, makes hemoglobin release oxygen. Okay, it promotes the release of O2. Okay, um, this is in a, a low pH, high, high acid environment. The hemoglobin is right shifted in this environment and that uh, promotes a release of oxygen. And we like to see a right shift, okay? We like to see a right shift in the distal tissue beds, right? In the distal tissue beds. Or really in any sort of tissue where I um, am, am making a lot of carbon dioxide. I have cells that are working, they're making a lot of CO2, and um, they're, uh, they're requiring a lot of oxygen. Okay, so we like to see this right shift occur, um, the right shift, um, the decreased affinity for oxygen occur in the distal tissue beds or wherever I have tissues that need oxygen. And likewise, when I have an environment where I have an elevated pH or a high pH, uh, or a low hydronium, hydrogen, um, proton, whatever you want to call that um, concentration, we have what's known as a left shift that occurs. A left shift occurs. And that is an increased affinity. So hemoglobin has an increased affinity for oxygen. And instead of releasing oxygen, the hemoglobin wants to lock onto oxygen, it wants to hold onto oxygen, and we tend to want to see the left shift occur um, in the alveoli of the lungs, okay? Because we want, that's where we want hemoglobin to have a high affinity for oxygen, so it'll lock that oxygen up, and then when the hemoglobin gets to the tissues, um, the, the, the presence of a lower pH will then cause um, or one of the things that can cause uh, hemoglobin to want to release the oxygen into those, those tissue beds that need it. Okay, so that's the Bohr effect. That should be um, fairly easy for us or, or fairly intuitive at this point. Now let's go ahead and contrast that with the Haldane effect. Okay, so the Haldane effect. It's H-A-L-D-A-N-E. All right, the Haldane effect. And the Haldane effect differs a little bit from the Bohr effect. So the Haldane effect has to do, it does have to do with hemoglobin, okay? 
but it has to do with the hemoglobin's affinity not for oxygen, but maybe, and I'll just make this red, but for CO2, for carbon dioxide. It's how they in effect um, describes hemoglobin's affinity for carbon dioxide, uh, which is very different than hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. Actually, these are, are somewhat opposite concepts in, 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 a, in a certain sense. Um, Okay, so it, Haldane effect, the first hurdle that you need to get over is that the Haldane effect is really looking at the affinity hemoglobin has for carbon dioxide. Now, we are used to um, talking about carbon dioxide transport, and you've probably seen this before, but, you know, here I have the, uh, the tissues over here, and I have the tissues producing CO2, and in the presence of the enzyme, uh, I'll just write it up here, carbonic anhydrase, H2O and carbon dioxide can combine in a, a, a reversible reaction at equilibrium, or it wants to be at equilibrium, um, and that produces H2CO3, which is carbonic acid, which then um, quickly uh, breaks down into um, hydrogen ions, HCO3 by carbon ions, and this is how we transport most of the carbon dioxide into the blood. Um, and then when that carbon dioxide gets to the lungs, um, this combines to make H2CO3 carbonic acid, and then carbonic acid um, in the alveoli breaks back down to H2O and CO2, and the carbon dioxide can be exhaled, okay? Um, uh, of course, this being a reversible reaction as well. Um, and we're used to, to learning this, and really only around 80% or so, um, which is most of the CO2, is transported this way. And some of the carbon dioxide can actually be transported. Um, it can actually attach uh, to hemoglobin. If you look at hemoglobin, um, hemoglobin, I'm not really going to do it any justice drawing it here, but it kind of has these four, one, one molecule of hemoglobin kind of has these four little little um, globules, if you will, and then you have your, your binding sites which contain an iron, and iron's in a positive, it's oxidation state, uh, puts it in a, I forget, it's, a, it's ferric or ferrous state, um, but you know, it's, it's positive nonetheless, and it's bound by ligands like histidine, and um, what happens is, um, you know, oxygen or carbon dioxide can attach to these sites. And when we talk about oxygen attaching, so there's an oxygen molecule. If an oxygen molecule attaches to this site and the other three sites don't have anything attached, that causes a conformational change in this, in, in this, um, this hemoglobin molecule that makes the other three sites really want to get a hold of more oxygen. Um, so really, the fact that oxygen binds, o when one molecule of oxygen binds, that in essence um, left shifts the other three, and then um, or induces kind of a left shift. And then if another um, oxygen were to bind, these two are even more left shift, and they want to bind oxygen even more. Um, and then you know, of course, once um, I have all four sites bound with oxygen, well, it doesn't really have doesn't matter. It's it's all bound. Um, Something somewhat similar can happen in the Haldane effect, but not with oxygen. So we essentially have two things that can kind of occur um, with the Haldane effect as well. And it has to do with oxygen. Okay, So I can have two, kind of two different situations that will occur with the Haldane effect. I can have a situation where I have high... Okay, I have high O2 concentration, okay? And that would be like this kind of situation here, maybe in the alveoli where I have lots of oxygen. And then I can have another situation where I have low O2 concentrations. Um, and you may see this occur perhaps in the um, distal tissue beds or in tissues that are um, extracting a lot of oxygen, okay? So high and low oxygen um, concentration environments. Now, in the presence of a high oxygen concentration environment, where there's lots of oxygen, um, a high oxy oxygen um, environment where there's a lot of oxygen, uh, something very interesting happens to the hemoglobin. Um, it's 
onloading oxygen, right? Oxygen's onloading. And as oxygen onloads, the affinity for CO2 decreases. So in a high oxygen environment, hemoglobin has a decreased affinity for CO2. So in a high oxygen environment, hemoglobin tends to want to get rid of CO2, okay? Um, and this is very handy if we are in the alveoli. All right, if we're in the alveoli, that's where I want hemoglobin to get rid of CO2, right? I want it to get rid of CO2 and onload oxygen. And so in a high oxygen environment, um, the affinity for hemoglobin, uh, the affinity that hemoglobin has for CO2 is decreased. Now, we can contrast that with a low O2 environment. In a low oxygen environment, okay, where it may be in the blood and the, the tissue beds where there isn't as much oxygen, um, hemoglobin's affinity for uh, CO2 is going to increase. Okay, so it's going to have an increased affinity for CO2. Okay, so what, what does that mean? Well, that means that hemoglobin is going to want to bind CO2, and this is a good thing in the tissue beds, right? Um, where I have lots of CO2 and I need to transport that CO2 to the lungs, I want that hemoglobin to be able to um, have a high affinity for that CO2 and bind it. Um, so you would see this occur maybe in the tissues, all right, or the tissue beds, where I'm using a lot of oxygen, I'm making a lot of, of CO2. And that really is the essence of the Haldane effect. So in conclusion, um, if we want to kind of compare and contrast the Bohr effect to the Haldane effect, the Bohr effect is looking at the relationship that hemoglobin has for oxygen, the affinity hemoglobin has for oxygen, whereas the Haldane effect is describing the affinity that hemoglobin has for carbon dioxide. Now, these do affect one another because high oxygen environments are going to decrease the affinity in the Haldane effect, whereas a low oxygen environment will increase the affinity. Okay, so the Haldane effect and the Bohr effect are both occurring at the same time, uh, but they become, you know, their, their effects become uh, pronounced in certain areas at the same time as well. Um, but that's the fundamental difference is the Bohr effect is really looking at hemoglobin and oxygen affinity, whereas the Haldane effect looks at the um, affinity hemoglobin has for carbon dioxide. Okay, guys, hopefully you found that helpful, and hopefully you found my artwork a bit improved as I'm now uh, currently using a brand new bamboo um, tablet attached to my um, laptop, and it looks like I'm able to write and draw much easier. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging out.